The future is nearer than we think, and the innovations we see today complement it. Several technologies are being developed, but one that catches our attention is OpenAI's new chat GPT-4. What does this technology do? Is it better than previous technologies? Join us as we introduce OpenAI's chat GPT-4. Developed and launched by OpenAI in November 2022, ChatGPT is an AI-powered chatbot designed to answer questions and respond to queries in text form in a way that sounds natural and human. It was launched as a prototype on the 30th of November, 2022, and it massively gained attention due to its detailed responses and precise answers. After the release of ChatGPT, OpenAI's value was estimated at 29 billion US dollars. This chatbot mainly uses information from the internet to carry out and process requests that have been trained on back-and-forth conversations. As a result, it can understand follow-up questions, admit its own mistakes and limitations, and reject inappropriate requests. ChatGPT uses something called a neural network to make sense of writing. Then it proceeds to use that sense to become really good with words. A neural network consists of algorithms wired to copy how neurons in the human brain communicate with each other. ChatGPT mainly uses fundamental human interactions to help the chatbot predict the outcome and find patterns in language. This was possible because the technology's intuition was created using human AI trainers interacting directly with the language model. The first step that ChatGPT goes through before giving us answers is by analyzing as much publicly available text as possible, which involves everything it can find online. However, there are several models of ChatGPT. We have GPT-1, GPT-2, GPT-3, and the latest innovation, GPT-4. GPT-1 was launched in 2018. It was developed on an enormous books corpus dataset, and the generative language model could learn significant range dependencies and acquire wide knowledge on a different corpus of contiguous text and long stretches. Due to its pre-training, one of the notable achievements of GPT-1 was its ability to carry out zero-shot performance on various tasks. This ability proved that generative language modeling could be exploited with a practical pre-training concept to generalize the model. Its invention generated pathways for other models which could further enhance its potential in generative pre-training with larger datasets and parameters. In 2019, GPT-2 was developed using a more extensive dataset, and additional parameters were added to build a more robust language model. GPT-1 and GPT-2 are similar in that they both leverage the decoder of the transformer model. GPT-3 is the third version of this generative pre-training model series so far, and it also became OpenAI's breakthrough AI language program. The results with GPT-3 are faster response time and accuracy, allowing NLP models to benefit businesses by effectively and consistently maintaining best practices and reducing human errors. The primary purpose of GPT-3 was to make language processing more powerful and faster than its previous versions, without any unique tuning. Now, we come to the latest innovation, GPT-4. GPT-4 is the most recent and most advanced model made by OpenAI and is a text-only model. The future of deep learning is most likely to be multimodal models. Also, GPT-4's AI is quite excellent at multitasking with various categories of text, and GPT-4 would most likely be the first large AI model with sparsity at its core. Sparse models use conditional computation to reduce computing costs, ensuring that not all neurons in the AI model are active at any given time. As the latest technological innovation, GPT-4 has some upgrades one of which is the model size. GPT-4 would not be super big, but the CEO, Sam Altima, stated that it would most definitely not be bigger than GPT-3. The model will undoubtedly be quite large compared to previous generations of neural networks, but size won't be its distinguishing feature. It'll likely lie somewhere between GPT-3 and Gopher, and there's a good reason for this decision. Having more parameters is just one of the factors among many that can enhance performance. Altman stated they were no longer focusing on making models immensely larger, but on getting the best out of smaller models. Quite a massive number of OpenAI researchers were early advocates of the scaling hypothesis, but they have now discovered other unexplored paths that can lead to improved models. GPT-4 would not be much larger than GPT-3, and those are the reasons. OpenAI would focus more on other aspects like data, algorithms, parameterization, or alignment that could bring significant improvements more cleanly. We'll also have to wait to see the capabilities of a 100T parameter model. Before we go on, like and subscribe to this channel if you'd love to get exciting content like this. To get the best out of GPT-4, language models would suffer from one critical limitation when it comes to optimization. The training is often quite expensive, and companies have to make trade-offs between accuracy and cost. This often results in models being notably under-optimized. 
Nowadays, companies with DeepMind and OpenAI leading the way are exploring other approaches. They are trying to find optimal models instead of just bigger ones. Last month, Microsoft and OpenAI showed us that GPT-3 could be further improved if they trained the model with optimal hyperparameters. It found that a 6.7B version of GPT-3 increased its performance so much that it was comparable to the original 13B GPT-3 model. Hyperparameter tuning, which is unfeasible for larger models, resulted in a performance increase equivalent to doubling the number of parameters. They found a new parameterization in which the best hyperparameters for a small model were also the best for a larger one of the same family. This allowed them to optimize models of arbitrary size for a tiny fraction of the training cost. The hyperparameters can then be transferred virtually costlessly to the larger model. Current models are under-trained and oversized. Given that GPT-4 will most likely be more significant than GPT-3, it would need about 5 trillion training tokens to be compute optimal, based on DeepMind's findings, an order of magnitude higher than current datasets. What's certain is that they'll focus on optimizing other variables apart from model size, finding the best set of hyperparameters and the optimal compute model size, and a number of parameters could result in unbelievable improvements in all benchmarks. Altman also noted that people wouldn't believe how good models can do without making them more prominent. Regardless, the company is bringing in a new era with multimodality. GPT-4 will most definitely be a text-only model, as the future of deep learning will mostly be multimodal models. The artificial intelligence of GPT-4 is excellent at multitasking, with various categories of text already, and it will not be able to assess and mimic visual data. Some business owners were really hoping for this multimodality, but such techniques would still need to be revised. This is because human brains are multisensory, because we do live in a multimodal world. Perceiving the world one mode at a time greatly limits AI's ability to navigate or understand it. However, perfect multimodal models are more complicated to build than good language-only or vision-only models, because combining visual and textual info into a single representation is challenging. We have limited notions of how our brain does it, so we don't know how to implement it in neural networks. Another likelihood of GPT-4 is that it will be a dense model. GPT-4 would most likely be the first large AI with sparse models. This uses conditional computation to reduce computing costs and ensures that not all neurons in the AI model are active at any given time. The model can quickly scale beyond a trillion parameters without acquiring high computing costs. Models that leverage conditional computation, using different parts of the model to process different types of inputs, have found great success recently. These things make the models scale easily beyond the 1T parameter mark without suffering from high computing costs. It then creates an impression of an orthogonal relationship between model size and computed budget. However, the benefits of MO approaches reduce on very large models. With the history of OpenAI's focus on dense language models, it is sensible to expect GPT-4 will also be a dense model. And given that Altman said GPT-4 would not be much larger than GPT-3, it is safe to conclude that sparsity is not a likely option for OpenAI at least for now. Sparsity, similar to multimodality, will most likely dominate the future generations of neural networks, given that our brain AI's inspiration relies mostly on sparse processing. In addition, GPT-4 would be more aligned than GPT-3. This means that the GPT language model will follow intentions, and it will follow values more closely. To achieve this impressive alignment, GPT-4 uses natural input language and human feedback to improve. While human judges have determined GPT-4 to have more advanced alignment than GPT-3, OpenAI has put a lot of effort into tackling the AI alignment problem. Those problems involve how to teach language models to follow our intentions and listen to our values, whatever that means exactly. It's not just a difficult problem mathematically, for example. How can we make AL understand what exactly it is that we want, but also philosophically? Yet, they made the first attempt with Instruct GPT, a renewed GPT-3 trained with human feedback to learn to follow instructions. They later improved how the model was aligned because it was limited to OpenAI employees and English-speaking labelers. True alignment should include groups with all kinds of provenance and features regarding gender, race, nationality, religion, etc. It's a great challenge, and any steps toward that goal are welcome. The GPT-4 would impact different types of businesses, ranging from content writers to data scientists. Due to this, Many businesses would most likely benefit while it may hurt others. Businesses that it would have an impact on include 
The GPT-4 can also be used to gain and sell more content. Although it sounds hugely like an advantage, it has disadvantages too because it would most likely put content writers out of work. Customers would not require content writers anymore since the GPT-4 can help them generate ideas faster. GPT-4 would most likely benefit software developers. The trillions of parameters involved means that developers can use more symbols and quickly create larger bodies of text, but then with each advantage comes a disadvantage, and there are most likely to be coding errors, and that would leave coders without a job. The marketing and sales industry would benefit a lot from the launch of GPT-4, as the program can easily generate simple sales copy and advertisements. GPT-4 would also benefit the translation industry positively and negatively. GPT-4 can help the translation service customers get their translation quite faster, which would be very accurate. Translated services that use the GPT-4 would need to be supervised and the generated translation would be reviewed. In data science, GPT-4 would help data scientists process and assess much larger quantities of information in projects. GPT-4 will also provide data scientists with access to more training data resources, making it easier to develop robust algorithms. GPT-4 would have a very positive influence on data scientists by making their work easier. This technology would definitely transform our world. But do you think it would be for the better or for the worse? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.